I think it's interesting how fears become categorically universal. I just saw this woman in the parking lot petting somebody else's dog. And for most people who have never had a negative experience with a dog or another animal, their first response or their first uh, emotion or feeling is excitement and love. children it's pretty much the same thing you know like we haven't most of us haven't been hurt at, at a younger age and, and until something happens until we've experienced a certain level of trauma or enough trauma everybody's just another person and we're very independent and we we're excited about new people and we want to meet new people and we want to understand the others around us and we approach it with the sincere curiosity and this raw level of whatever emotion it is at the time, whether you're angry at someone for stealing your toy, it's a sincere anger, but it's temporary. Whether you're excited to see somebody because they're a friend of yours or you're attracted to them, you know, it's, it's sincere and, and it comes out and it's displayed and it's expressed and that is healthy. attacked by a dog, if it's traumatic enough, if it's, if it's detrimental enough to whatever part of their psyche, then that dog becomes universal, that attack becomes universal in the category of dog, and so then that person associates every dog with that one extreme, traumatic, almost always negative event with the, the other dog and then everything else is just out the window.
unfortunately, most people have been hurt by other people, a person, multiple people, to varying degrees, and that trauma stays with them, and then suddenly, the entire category of people becomes negative to that person, just like, just like somebody who had maybe been attacked by a dog at a young age, and then has severe anxiety at the sight of any dog, regardless of whether it's ever bit anybody, or whether it's nice or not, it just, it brings back the negative experience, those emotions are so strong that they come into situations where they're unmerited. And they're unnecessary. uncertainty and a lot of people have had nothing but good experiences or at least not any severe negative experiences with dogs and so they're just like oh a dog like let me go pet it let me go this is interesting this is new this is uh, sincerely exciting or, or emotional in, in one form or the other in a positive way It's the body's way of trying to, or the mind's way, rather, of trying to protect itself and defend itself, saying, hey, remember that time? Remember that dog? Remember, you know, we trusted that dog, and this is what it did to us? Well, it does the same thing with people. Unfortunately, I think a lot of us are just really bad at discerning micro expressions and forms of body language and other things that might be able to help us determine whether or not the people that we are around or approaching or being approached by are actually going to be a danger to us or a threat or will be detrimental to our mind in one way or another or our body, which will then in turn affect the mind and its future decisions. people get the stronger they get and I think that that's true in a sense but it's like this weakening strength where we have to be strong for no reason we're protecting ourselves from nothing quite literally and it's exhausting it forces people to rely on you know coffee every morning to wake up because they're undergoing this everyday stress this ego stress basically you know whether they think they have to pretend to be dominant or, or attractive or intelligent or whatever they have to do to, to fit in maybe to prevent those previous traumas from occurring in the future like how some people are small and they don't grow very tall maybe and then as they get older they say well if I can't get taller I'll get bigger and they start to bodybuild because you know at least that's their way of making sure that whatever happened to them in the past doesn't happen in the future they don't want to feel that negative feedback from others about how they're small. The ignorance is bliss, as they say, you know, and it's hard to get back to the root where we were completely raw and real 
about what we wanted because now we have all these other these other what ifs these other layers on top you know these these bricks so even though maybe he stays 5 4 the rest of his life if he weighs 250 pounds and can lift your car maybe you won't make fun of him you know but he still carries that burden he still carries that uh, he literally still carries that weight around he's just put all of this muscle on top of it. circling back I think it's just unfortunate there's so many things to enjoy here um, there's so many things to do there's so many great people underneath the fear everyone has that layer of fear on top everyone has that that reptilian brain that monkey brain that whatever you want to call it protecting us from things that we've already experienced 